Okay folks, once the polyfill is dry, you will be left with some of these lines where it's dried out. Now you can brush these off with your finger, it'll take ages, but I prefer just to get a piece of metal and just drag them over. Now it does get rid of the most, but it doesn't get rid of everything because you really don't want it getting rid of everything. If it gets rid of everything you're going to be I say, unrealistic, it is going to spoil the illusion. Um, if it's polished smooth. So, just get a big ruffle brush, any big ridges. Hopefully, that's coming out on the camera. Get it on the top there. Once you've got the big areas off, then you're ready to dust it off. This will generate quite a bit of dust, as you can imagine. Um, now, what I'm going to do is take this outside and do it outside so the dust will go on the grass and just wash away next time it rains. Which, knowing the British weather, will be in about 10 minutes. So I've got to the stage now where I've got all the rough bits off, or most of the rough bits. There's still imperfections there, but I actually want those. Um, they will be smoothed over, but they will add to the character of the board later. So this is one of the pieces, and you can see they're all different levels, which will make the tabletop a lot more interesting. However, um, I've got a white here, which is going to be quite porous. This isn't going to be porous at all, and it's blue. On some of the other boards, I've got MDF showing in the corners, which is going to be that colour. Um, so I need something to even the colours up for when I apply my top coats and decoration on the top. So the first stage that I'm going to do is use emulsion. Now, there are other stuff you can use, or there is other stuff you can use. Um, but that tub of emulsion will do me for ages and it costs four quid, four quid for five litres. When you think I'm paying nearly three quid for one of those, four quid for that doesn't seem too bad. I'm using a big brush, this brush, this tray and a roller came together uh, for another four quid from Asda. I went in, bought that and that for eight quid. Incredible, I don't know how they can sell them for that, but there you go. So. That's what I'm going to do now, trying to keep the cost down again. All I'm going to do now is paint it so that it ends up with an, an even, more even colour um, for the top coats. It's probably going to take two coats of that top stuff. Won't take long to paint, but the, you know, it may take me several days because I'm waiting for paint to dry, literally. So I've got the boards to do. Um, I'll, I'm not going to video painting these boards. Okay, first coat done. Now you can see what I mean about tying the colours in. It is going to take at least another coat on this and the drying time for this is going to be oh, two to four hours in this temperature. Um, I didn't, don't know if I mentioned it earlier but it's quite important to use matte if you're using emulsion rather than silk or even you know gloss because um, they're designed to clean whereas matte isn't. So you want your stuff that you're going to put on after to stick to it so if you use something like sheen or silk, um, it's going to come off. So stick to the mat. You'll often see them side by side on the shelf. Just make sure you pick the right one up. The that you saw earlier has now dried. Um, I think that's the board that I showed you. You can see that it does dry, not as transparent as it looks when it's wet. But it still needs a second coat to tie everything in um, for the preparation of the next paints. So there's the boards. Uh, dried earlier, probably took around about four hours to dry with today's climate, so I'm going to give them another second coat or a second coat um, just to finish them up. Okay, once I've done the two coats of emulsion, uh, matte emulsion just to remind you, then you get an even coverage of colour like that. So the blues, the MDF, and all the other colours, the whites, are all fairly even. And I'm ready for the next stage. I want to make the joins less visible where I've got joins between I mean this join here and that join there will always be more visible because it is the actual join between the two boards um, but here I don't know how well it will show up on the camera if I zoom in this is quite rough here where you can see the polyfill has joined it um, there will be cracks developing in the future. Uh, the paint's hiding it for now, but it will come back again. So I 
for the next stage I'm just going to give it a light covering light covering of sand I think I'll focus on one of the boards so you can see I'm going to give this a covering of sand now this area here is where I want the river to flow so I'm not putting any sand in there I want sand here all over here and on the sides I don't want it on the faces of these rocky edges I do want it on the ledges and on there where grass would normally grow but not on the ledges I want that to stay as it is so in order to do that I first need a covering of PVA glue so it be quite generous because it is going to have to hold sand and this area here Okay, now with the glue. Now the place that's tricky to get to with the glue is the join there. So I am just putting an extra bit along there. I could do all the boards at once, but I'm not going to because it's a race against time then, and why be stressed while doing the process? I've then got one of these kind of brushes, which is just a foam brush. You could. Um, use just a paintbrush as well if you wanted um, making sure I've got an even coverage all the way around making it nice and smooth If you have to put some more glue on, then do so. Just put it on the ledge now. I want to avoid runs where possible because it will make stand, sand stick to places that I don't want the sand stuck to. So, turn it all in there. So, if there's any danger of a run, then I will try and get it off as much as possible. My idea is to get an even coverage so the dust and the sand that I'm going to do sticks all over. That's, that's where my uh, river's going to go. These sponge brushes are fairly cheap. I think I've got a pack of three various sizes. Um, for I think it was a pound from Poundland or something like that. I'm sure in America or elsewhere there'll be equivalent stores. So making sure I've got good and even coverage. On to the next part. Okay, I've got the face there, don't want that. The white glue or PVA glue, you haven't got to worry about getting it on your skin. It will just wash off when you're finished. So, let's keep the river going. Now I wouldn't, that's the board done, nice even coverage if I see any areas that haven't been covered I'll just move the uh, stuff around a bit. I can always come back later but you know I'm trying to save time and then I get the sand. Now I buy this sand and wash it because it's cheaper but you can do it with clay pit sand. Literally grab a handful and just a dusting. It's just then, most of this is going to be covered by grass later, so I don't need a great deal. I'm just hiding, you know, trying to make the edges. And 
bit more even. Uh, there will be grass on this later. Um, why bother when you can just put the grass straight on? I think it's a bit more realistic. You know, I'm not too worried about getting it in the river because there's no uh, glue there. It is just going to pop off again later. This bit here that I'm doing now will be like a tidal estuary. So I do need um, sand here, but I mean a bag of a bag of play pit sand. I think the last bag of play pit sand I bought was from Tesco's. Paid about three pound for it, so it's not expensive by any means. I have seen boards in the past done and just left like this, but you know the the colour later will make a huge difference. I'm quite fortunate in that I've got my own man cave to work through this in. Uh, best place if you're doing this and it's a dry day is to do it outside. I wouldn't actually do it in the front room or in the kitchen because uh, other family members are going to get just a little tense when you're covering everything in sand. Now a bag of play pit sand for three pound you know, you will last you a couple of these boards easy. This is, uh, like I say, actual concrete in sand, which I wash myself. It is time consuming, but you know, for a pound, I'll get enough sand to do bases, and I do get different size um, because I sieve it out later. I do get different sizes. So that I can use some on the minis as well. Hopefully, with this last bit. And there you see, I think now that's going to take a good few hours to dry. So I'll carry on and do the other two now, these two over here, and then I'll show you how to do the next bit after. Okay, as soon as you've given it half an hour, 45 minutes or so, um, there'll be enough dry there. Just uh, putting this on the next one. So you can tap off all the excess sand. Which will help you see any areas that you've missed. I'll add this up a little bit. And if there are any areas that are quite dry, just sprinkle a bit more sand on them again. Okay, remember that your white glue will dry clear, so if there is any on show, it'll all get hidden. Okay, areas like this, need a touch more glue on them. Might help to take the lid off. So, I'm just going over the areas that I missed.
that's that. And then literally, same again for the others. Once the glue dries, um, the sand that's there is going to stay there. You simply tip it off, you know, tip it on its side and all the dust will fall. I then get an old brush and just dust over, make sure there's no loose grains and you end up with a board like this. Now this is going to be one where I've got a river uh, flowing through it. So along the river bank um, I'm going to put some larger um, debris. Alongside the river bank I want it to look like it's dropped off stones um, like rivers do and you'll often find them alongside river banks. So I'm going to do a thin coating of glue along here and put these uh, bits on which are larger than the normal grains of sand. So first thing I'm going to do along the riverbank is a line of glue. Making sure I'm getting a good coverage. Ooh, probably a bit too much there at the end. Then back to my trusty sponge brush and I'm just spreading it out a little. So you're looking probably an inch alongside the riverbank. It doesn't have to be perfect and you'll see for why at a later stage. But here we go, all the way along. If I think there's any areas where there's not enough glue, I'll put that on. And then with a pinch of these, just scatter them along the edge. When rivers, I mean, you will see patterns in river banks, but they're not, it's not like somebody's done it on a technical drawing board. So you don't want it too perfect. Any stones that bounce all over will come off later, they're not going to be glued, so I'm not worried about those. Just focusing all the way along on the edge of the river and it will help define the area between the river and in this case what will be like a tidal estuary. So there's a good coverage, probably a bit light there on the end. And that's it.